Hallelujah. Praise Yah for another Shabbat, another opportunity to sit at his feet and to hear the words of Hamashiach this morning. What he has to say. You know, we've been hearing his words and we've been learning great lessons. And we're going to pick it up today. Uh, last week, we, you know, we went over some very important aspects of this walk. We've seen, you know, how he continues to heal on the Shabbat, you know, to make a point to these religious leaders about the, mer the purpose and the mercy and the love of our Father and how that love should be amplified through you and I to one another. And he gives us lessons about what's about to come and, and what we're to look forward to and, you know, how we should present ourselves in, in these type of settings. You know, he's telling us, you know, about not, you know, magnifying ourselves. Don't be boastful. You know, don't put yourself in a, in a distinguished place when you're invited in to a setting such as a, a, a wedding feast. Allow the one that's inviting you to amplify you, to elevate you, to exalt you. And then, you know, you will be elevated amongst those that, are, that you're amongst. But now we get to go into another aspect of this story that's so important. And we're going to pick this up today, Brother JP here. And let's go down to 24. And let us know what it is you see so we can learn our lesson for today. Hallelujah. 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 This is Luke chapter 14, starting in verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, but thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of Elohim. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his master these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither and poor, and the maimed and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the master said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right, what you get from this this morning, brother? Uh, it's just... The only thing I can say is, you know, praise Yahuwah. Um, Abba is good and his love um, for his, for the people, for his creation. And how, how he loves his people. And, and that's all I can continue to say because it's just so amazing the way that, the way he is, he's loving. I'll just put it like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Has me speechless. Hallelujah. Well, there's so much to gain from this. There's so much wisdom in what we're seeing here. 
you know, I guess we'll just start at the very beginning of it all. You know, I mean, we're looking at, you know, he's been invited into his house, right? We're, when we begin this story, you know, he was invited into supper. So, you know, the one that he, that had invited him, he begins to speak, right? And he, and he says, and he's given him a lesson here, right? He's telling them, when you give a dinner or a supper, don't ask your friends, don't ask your brothers or your relatives, nor the rich neighbor. And why is that? Because, you know, they're going to want to repay you back, right? They're going to, they're going to want to do something for you in, in response to what you've done. This is not really the, the message that's being delivered here. You know, we're supposed to be doing this. And in other places in scriptures, it says the same thing to do things for the, the needy, the widows, the orphans, you know, those that are in need. And <clears throat> to do these things without boasting, without being known, don't, don't let people know that you're doing these things, right? But he's, but he's telling them, these are the ones that, that you should go and invite. And think about the, the message that he's saying here to these people. You know, their first thought is to bring those close to them, those that, you know, that could elevate their stature, you know, to put them in an elevated place, as we read earlier. But now we see, you know, he's telling them to go out and give a feast and, and invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Isn't that who Yahusha is kind of drawn to? And we, and as we read the stories, these are the ones that cry out to him. These are the ones that are in need. You know, there's scriptures where he talks about, you know, the, the healthy don't need to be, you know, don't, don't need to be healed. It's the ones that are sick, the ones that are lame. Those are the ones. And it's not always a physical healing that they need. Sometimes they just need a physical touch. They need to be invited. They need to feel important as well. And, and when we see this, he, he's telling them who to go out. And, and, and once he, he, he lays out the ones that are not obvious of who we should be uh, inviting, he says that if you do this, you shall be Baruch. You shall be blessed. And why is that? Because they don't have the means to be able to repay you. And therefore, you're not going to expect that. You're going to do this out of the, the kindness and the lovingness of your heart. You're taking care of your fellow man, brother, sister, right? Those that are in need. And he said, and you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is where your reward comes. We're not doing things for a reward in this life. This goes back to our example last week about trying to put ourselves in an elevated position. You know, that's not what we're called to do here. We're supposed to do these things out of the kindness and the loving uh, heart that has been placed inside of us, knowing that these are the ones. And it goes down to this story that we're hearing him where he begins to tell us a story. You know, and he begins to talk about, you know, these matters and somebody speaks up and they say, Baruch is he who eats bread in the reign of kingdom uh, or, or the reign of Elohim. But he says something, he says to him, a certain man gave a great supper and he invited many. So, you know, he begins to turn the, the tide of our understanding here as he begins to lay this out. And this is a story that we all should be very familiar with because we're part of it. He, he sent out his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited. Now, who, is the, who, who did he originally invite in, in, into his kingdom? You know, we need to make our, our understanding of who he's speaking towards. Who is it that he's, he's directing this to, Right. And if we can get our minds wrapped around that, he's coming and he, and, and he initially gives us this invitation, if you will, to the Hebrews, if you will. You know, he, he brought this message to them. He's delivered this to them. They didn't receive it. They rejected it in many ways. And then we're going to see some of the lame excuses that people give when they're, when they're being given an invitation. They're being invited to something that's so spectacular but they're so caught up in their own lives that they can't even see, right? So he, in this story, he says a certain uh, a, a man gave a great supper and he invited many. And, and he sent 
his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, all is now ready. Now think about this in our days. You know, if, if it was you and I that were being invited to something and we gave these type of lame excuses, how would that be received by the one that's inviting you? One, by one, they all made excuses. Are we going to make excuses? Think, let, let me go through these excuses real quick and see how well, you know, you would receive them yourself. You receive, you invite you prepare, you're ready, everything. And then the message comes back from the first one that I bought a field and I need to go and see it. That's it. This, I got something else to do. It is more important to me right now. So I ask you to excuse me. I ask to be excused from your invite. Another, he bought five oxen or five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. So he's going to go out and do some work. He wants to play with his oxen and see what they can do for him. Instead of taking this opportunity of this invite and, and engage in it and become part of what, you know, this, this extravagant invitation. See, they don't understand the importance of what they're being invited to. So their lives got in the way. Isn't that what scripture tells us? You know, that, and we're, we're going to see it more as we go down into the cost of being a disciple. Where is your priorities? What's important to you in this life? You know, and one by one, they all began making excuses. They all made excuses. You know, another said that he married a wife. And because of that, I'm not able to come. So when the servant came back and he reported this to his master, what, you, you can almost understand why he would have been angry. You know, these people have been invited and they're rejecting his invite. They're too, you know, they're too busy with their own lives to worry about this invite. So his servant was told to hurry on and go out into the streets and bring in the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind, those that wouldn't normally be invited to something to this measure. And there was still more room. So he tells them to go out. He's telling us to go out. Isn't that part of the great commission to go out and make disciples of, of the nations? Because the ones that have been invited originally have rejected the invite. So now he opens it up to those that actually have a heart, that have a desire to be part of something great. So the master said to the servant, go out into the street corners, into hedges, and compel them to come in. Are we not to compel so that the house is filled? You know, there's scripture that Yahuwah doesn't, he doesn't want to see anyone perish, but that all would come to the saving knowledge. You know, that they all would enter into his kingdom, that they would be part of his, his family. But not everybody wants that. Not everybody's accepting that. People get caught up into their own lives and they play sometimes, if you will, you know, that they're, you know, uh, committed, that they're devoted, that they're obedient until things come up and then their excuses begin to go out. And the master doesn't accept those too well. He wants you to come with, with sincerity, of course. He wants you to come and be part. He wants you to come up and take your seat where you've been invited. But it's up to you and I to do that. You know, in the last part, he says, the master said to the servants, go into the street corners and the hedges. And he says, to compel them all. Those that, will, that have an ear to hear and that have a willingness to come and, and to sit down. But the ones that were invited, that, that were too busy, what does he say to them? He says that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Are we going to reject him? Are we going to turn away from his call? Or are we going to embrace? Are we going to engage? Are we going to go do the things that we're called to do so that when, that, when you hear that invitation, when you hear that call, you're not going to be too busy doing everything else. You're going to lay that down because there's a cost to, to this walk. 
and I hope that all of us in this understand the cost and what's expected of us. But if we don't, we're going to get into this discussion and we're going to learn a little bit more today about what's required of you and I. If we're really going to truly walk in this life, in this path, this narrow path, there's a cost. So with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to uh, go to the hands that are raised and let's have a discussion. Brother Dean, what is it that you see this morning? Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Um, a couple of things. Um, firstly, uh, Yahuwah is no man's debtor. Yeah? So Yahuwah provides the increase. Um, and where it, it says every good and faithful gift comes from above, you know, comes from Yahuwah. So uh, if these, um, if we believe these, if we believe that the good in our life we have received from Yahuwah, then the, the most important thing um, within that whole receiving of the gift is the gratitude to the giver. Um, and also, there is no gift that Yahuwah gives unto us that should become an idol um, in our lives that we would forget him and that, you know, and we would choose the gift over him. Um, also, you know, even when, you know, this, the, the one of the things that says that the somebody found a wife, you know, and the scripture is clear, who who find of a wife, find of a good thing. So again, it's a good thing um, and finds favor with Yahuwah. Again, so it's Yahuwah, it's the, you know, his Ruach who has led you <laughs> to, to, to that wife um and to that good thing to that good person and it is he again who has made the all things good um so you know there is nothing you know and um also what struck out to me is when the it says that you know the the, the person uh, bought a field um you, you haven't sold anything in that field it doesn't state that you've sold anything you've you, you've just obtained something that you have not yet uh, uh sown in you know um, and again, it was with the, you know, just found a wife, you know, just, 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 just married. Um, so, and again, with the land, you, 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 you have a gift, but you still need instructions on how that gift should be best used or, or best, uh, preserved or nurtured or multiplied. Um, so that was one of the things. And then lastly, just to say that, uh, just shows that you know Yahuwah is not a respecter of persons because though he calls one first um his perfect will shall come to pass so he will call whoever else he needs to call because it's about his will it's about his love but ultimately it's also about his will so hallelujah his will that none should perish you know that we all come to this knowledge and that we all would walk it out but unfortunately even within this story and within life, if you will, you see that that's not how things operate. People don't, they don't value things the same as the other would, you know, we don't always see things the same on the same level, you know, and this, this takes us back to a, a, another portion uh, of scripture uh, in Deuteronomy 14, 29. And it's talking about the Levite because he has no part nor inheritance with you and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within your gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that Yahuwah thy Elohim may baruch thee in all of your works of your hands, which you do. See, there's a promise here, you know, that our hearts got to be bigger than just our local to ourselves within our own little families, our own, you know, assemblies, whatever it might be. You know, Yahuwah's plan is much bigger. It's more, it's more vast and it's more accommodating, but it's accommodating to those that want, those that desire this, those that are in need. You know, if, if you look at this parable in, in contrast to Yahusha's walk and all of the stories that we hear, it's always in regards to opposition against the religious and, and, he's, and he's embracing those that are in need. He's feeding them. He's teaching them. He's healing them. He's raising them up. Those that, that are reaching their hands out to him. Those that are reaching their hearts out, you know, that are speaking out. 
these are all found in scripture. And that's why we see these stories, you know, they, they culminate and they, they, they tell us such a deeper story that we have to look deeper into this because there's so much revelation that we can get to the heart of Yahuwah and Yahusha and what they desire from you and I, but then you can also see the hearts of men, you know, where our hearts are, how we get distracted, you know, and this leads us into, you know, how we walk before him. Are we going to walk hot? Are we going to walk cold or are we going to be lukewarm? Are we going to try to, to walk on both sides? You know, we know what scripture talks about this. So it has to be a serious, a serious thing that we have to consider here. What it, this invite is and who is for, it's not specifically for one group of people, even though it began there, you know, but those people didn't have a revelation or, or a heart to continue to pursue the ways of Yahuwah, the way he has laid out for them, they rejected it. They began to turn and go after other Alahims and other ways or just nothing at all. As we see here, they'd rather just live their lives, you know, uh, and, and not be involved in the things of the kingdom. But we're going to see as we continue to read on today, we're called a whole lot more than that simple life. You know, Brother JP, what you got, brother? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 24, verse 46 and 47, it says, Then he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus was necessary for Mashiach to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So we see that it, it says that it's going to be preached to all nations. And it started at Jerusalem, and I, I believe it started there already and from the beginning and so here it says in um the second portion i would like to read is romans chapter 11 verse 11 it says i say then they have they stumbled that they should fall certainly not but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy salvation has come to the gentiles it says in the, the new king james and the king james version and that word gentiles is the word ethnos um which means a race or it could be a tribe. Um, they say specifically a foreign non yahudim And so that's where we get the word um, that's really closely related like ethnicity or ethnic. And so I believe it's, it's amazing the way that Yahuwah, and that's why I say Abba is good because here we see, he said, okay, I'm gonna go and call the rest of the people then. I'm gonna, th this door is gonna be open to others. And, and it's amazing that it's being shown here in by Yahusha right here before he even um, sits at the right hand of the Father. And Abba is good. Hallelujah. Isn't it fun? You know, you get to see things you never really uh, recognize. You start to get a deeper revelation of things when you really start to ponder what we're reading when you when we re really listen to the words that are being spoken and start to relate them to other scriptures it begins to bring and create a whole deeper revelation a deeper story for us to grab a hold of and the importance of these matters you know this is serious business i mean it's not a game that we're that we're involved in here this is life you know life and death really you know and understanding you know what it is? What does it really mean to live, to be alive in 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 Yahusha and Yahuwah, you know, to be one with them, to to take on that call and charge that that has been in, uh, given to you and I, you know, the importance of that, and that is what these this story here is telling us, you know, it, the Father's love is so deep and so wide that if the ones that He has called to be His and to walk beside Him to be His servants, you know, His high, His priests and that type of thing. They reject him. He has a love. He's a, that, that's fine. I start with you, but that doesn't end with you. You know, his whole creation is, is his concern. Those that have a heart, you know, and we see that throughout the scriptures, how there was sojourners, there was foreigners that, that were walking with Yasserel, that were worshiping and praising, that were honoring the, the, these precepts and these statutes. Um, but they're required to do the same things, you know, it doesn't matter when we come into this walk and we come into this knowledge and understanding 
this is what's required of you and I. We can't do it our own way. We see the results of trying to do it a different way. We see the scriptures tell us and warn us of that. We have to do it uh, uh, in a specific way that has been outlined for you and I. And if we don't understand what that is, then we're going to miss the mark and we're going to fail uh, to achieve the goal that I believe each one of us is here for. Hallelujah. So, you know, that's why these precepts and these, the, the, the scriptures are so directive on, and they're, they're linked. So now we can look at what we see, you know, uh, written in, in other places of scripture that'll give us a greater understanding of what was, what we're reading and, and what it really means. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, but I want to go to uh, Diana in Florida. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I just have a question and I, I don't know if there's significance or maybe why, because um, I just noticed. So he said, like, when you give a feast, invite poor ones, crippled ones, lame ones, blind ones. And then, but then he says the story in the story, he says a man invited exactly the people he said not to invite first. And, and then the servant came back and he sent them out. Like, I, j I don't know. I, I'm just looking for like help and understanding why the man in the story invited the people he said not to invite and then later invited the ones he said to invite in verse 12. I was just looking for help on that. I believe it has to do with the, them being the, the chosen, if you will, the, the, the people that were chosen to, to represent and those, cho those people that chose that he chose originally as the, as we know, let's, let's take it as Yasserel, right? They were a chosen race of people that were chosen by Yahuwah to receive his word, to receive his covenant, to receive his promises, and to share that, right? To, to, to take that into the world. Well, they missed it. They didn't understand it. They thought it was exclusively just for them. Originally it was, and I don't believe it was ever intended that way, but if you're going to start something, you have to have a nucleus to begin from, a good foundation, right? And that's what he's looking for with his people. And then once those people were supposed to get it, then they were the ones that would would share it, right? Uh, would walk it out, would exhibit what it what it what he what it means to be a child of Alahim, you know? And and therefore we see that the first that the, the, the original chosen that he uh, had set it aside for, they, they rejected him, I guess you want to say. They rejected the invite. They, they were too busy to, to come to something that, that they were originally invited to. So then it was the next level and then the next level to continue to move beyond that uh, until the whole uh, goal, if you will, uh, that the father has was achieved, that his whole house would be filled that none would be forsaken, that none would be lost, except for those that choose that life, you know, that choose to reject, to choose to walk away. So I, what I'm seeing here is an order of, of, of release, if you will, of, um, a rollout. Uh, I can say it only in, in the terms that I know of it in the, in the, in, in a human form, if you will, in a business, you know, there's, there's levels that you start to release things and it continues to grow and, 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 it, agree, and it brings in a wider audience as you continue to grow. You know, this began with Yasrael and it continues to expand to those that hear it and believe it and receive it and then they engage in it. And, the, and then we, there's those that are, you know, outcast, those that are, you know, the lame, the, the weak, the, all of those that we see described here that have an opportunity presented to them now. They have an opportunity to be invited as well. And then there's still more room because he didn't say that any of those rejected the invite. There's a whole nother level of this story that we haven't considered. But then you get to the place where, you know, he says, go out and invite all. So that, you know, his whole place, his whole kingdom, his whole, uh, uh, his whole place, his whole kingdom is, is filled, you know, with people that love him and that serve him and to do what he's, that he's called us to do. And I'm just talking this in, in regards to us as a people, you know, we can look out past Yasserel and we can see all of those that walked with them. You know, there was many, according to Exodus, that walked out of Mitzrayim with them, you know, and continued to sojourn with them because they heard, 
what they what they believed and they believed it as well. They may have seen what Yahuwah did and they began to believe. You know, until that last breath, Yahuwah has not given up on none of us. You know, we may not be his right now, but it could be somewhere in the future where that word has to come to, to that person where they hear it and then they believe it and they receive it and they're invited in as well. I hope that helps uh, your, your question. Um, if, if Brother Jadiel has another uh, answer that may help a little bit more, I would invite that as well. But for now, I hope that helps you. Uh, Sister Robbie, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, this discussion is very, very interesting. Yeah, I kind of had a question, but it did get answered. I just want to uh, clarify that we desire to be a part of the bride that's there at the marriage supper. And then now, of course, you need guests to come. And so these guests, I think it was already mentioned, you mentioned that it was different groups. And then Brother uh, JP mentioned that this would include the Gentiles and so forth. So this is really um, just amazing uh, how much love that the Father has and that we should never try to discredit or say who's going to be in the kingdom and who's not going to be in the kingdom. Because there's so many different groups that could be included that are going to come to this marriage feast. So we just hope that whatever the Father has anointed us to be that we're there because like for example if he's called us to be part of his bride and then we say oh I don't really don't want to be a bride I just want to be one of the guests that are there I just want to be a guest well would you say that it's not up to us to decide if we want to be part of the bride or if we want to be a guest whatever the father has said we're going to be that's what we have to be you know according to what he has anointed us to do because the bride is going to go through some changes and some um, refining and different things to qualify to be a bride. So we have to understand that, that the father has some things that he's doing with us and we can't reject what he wants us to go through, whether it's types of persecutions or types of trials and tests. We have to go through what we have to go through to be approved to be his bride if that's what he wants us to be. Because we can't like jump back and forth, say, well, I want to be in this category. No, it's where the my father puts us is where we have to stay. So I just wanted to express that all praises to the most high. He definitely has an order to his kingdom. We see it in scripture, you know, there's different levels, uh, you know, depending on your position, I guess, uh, your beliefs, uh, how you walk, you know. Um, the the first in doesn't always you know uh as as we've been reading you know first in always doesn't mean that you're going to be sticking that you're going to be there you know to the end um and and you know it, it, i think that it's very interesting as we as we read through these accounts that we can see how people react and you know even how they correlate with today's society in a lot of ways you know, people busy, they caught up in their lives and they're not really concerned about the kingdom works. They're too worried about buying property and oxen and getting married. And, you know, as scripture says, you know, we're busy doing, living life that we sometimes we miss things. You know, we, we ignore things. We don't want to be bothered because we're, we're busy living our lives and doing whatever it is we do. Sometimes we miss that call, that invitation. And therefore, you know, we, we can see all of this playing out in this story, but we can also see it playing out around us, you know, and that's, this is really, these are life lessons that we're learning, that we're studying, trying to figure out our place, how we should walk, how we should be, you know, do you see yourself in that story? Or have you ever seen yourself in that story, you know, uh, that we're reading today? You know, these, you can put yourself in the midst of it, you can start to speculate, you know, in today's society, how do you see these characters playing out? You know, because the story is universal. He's speaking to us. You know, he's telling us, you know, there's those that are going to be his that are, are not going to make it because they give up. They walk away. They got, they get carried away with the, the, the cares of, of this life, you know, and therefore, you know, they kind of miss out 
on the calling. And sometimes that's a scary position. You know, we don't want to find ourselves in that way. So, you know, these are refresher uh, verses, if you will, to, te- to help us stay in line and stay on course and to continue to have that fire burning inside of us that we don't want to get comfortable where we start slacking and we start missing the mark, if you will. Brother Joshua, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I'm just looking here at the excuses that they made towards the, uh, the servant and how they are, you know, talking to him because it says, um, as they, how they all have bought field, they bought yoke and one was married, but they asked the servant to have them excuse rather than see what they could do first to secure the situation. Like if someone's married, understand that there's a certain time frame that they had to be together, you know, away from the, uh, the people, but it was the master calling them. So therefore they should be able to go. And the ones who have bought the possessions, the yoke in the field, the yoke could have been taken care of and secured and then gone to the, uh, the supper. And I see that the field will do nothing of itself. It would always be there until it was tended to. But uh, what uh, I see here is that they asked the servant to have them excused, thinking that the servant had the authority to excuse them. And so I believe that's where the, they, uh, because the ones that they think they know the master, they think that they'll be excused just because they know him. That's why the brothers, the, uh, you know, the relatives basically and friends, the closer they are, they think, oh, because they know them that they will be excused automatically. But that's not so. But also, they believe the servant had the authority when the servant never declared that. So not only did they disrespect the authority of the master, they believe the servant was above the master because they asked the servant and not the master. And if they were so concerned about their situation, they could have gone to the master directly and they say, master, we are here. We have answered your call. Will our fields and our oxen and our wives be taken care of while we are here? Because he's the one who gets the counsel and he's the one to make sure that we're covered and that we're, you know, all provided for. So not only did they disrespect it, his authority, they ignored his authority. They completely ignored him. That's why I see with these excuses of ones that they think they know him, uh, they got comfortable as a friend, not knowing what a friend really is. A friend establishes trust, not a friend to establish a way out of you know what's what's really important because i have a lot of friends that when i call upon them that i need there's always something that they make up it's like this is it's because i heard some need is a time of principle need is a principle it's not exactly a desire but to give those in need that desire is great when the principle is needed so that's what i see with these excuses these people were arrogant and they didn't think of the master. They thought only of themselves and thinking that they can escape even what the master uh, said to them, basically that they're not going to taste the supper. And, I, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that they still think that they're going to escape that, even at this very moment. So that's what I see with these excuses. There's such pride and arrogance and disrespect because they think themselves also above the master when they ask to serve him. So that's what I see when I I was looking at this. Wow. That's powerful perspective, brother. When you start seeing it in those, through those lenses, you know, it's funny because I, you know, I was going to go down that direction. So you beat me uh, in a lot of regards to that breakdown, but I'm glad you, you, you seen that. I think that that's vital that we look at, you know, how they perceive things as, as why a lot of the excuses come same way with you and I. How do we perceive things? Can we get out of something? I just don't feel like it. I, I'm going to make them an excuse. Well, like you said, the, the give that to the, the, the servant that, that came to bring the announcement. I don't know what kingdom that, 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 that would allow something to that degree for you to, to think that the, the, the servant is going to be able to give you a, a release from coming to something that his master has called you too, that has invited you too. 
you know, that's a, that's a position of honor in a sense, if you think about it, when, uh, when somebody of that great stature, in a sense, if we're looking at the father or, or his son, and they're giving you a personal invite, and you're too busy. Ooh, I, I, just the thought of that, I mean, if I just thinking about a king, you know, somebody had uh, somebody was called to come before the king of a country, no matter what country it would be, but to go there and, and then for that person to say, no, nah, I just got married, uh, I can't come, or I just bought a field or whatever the excuse is that you might have, think about how that would be received by somebody in that position, you know? You could be missing out on, a, on something very important that could be happening during that time, you know, that you're deciding to, that your life, uh, the things that you have are more important. So this is something that we have to think about the charge that we have in our lives. Are we, are we uh, kind of dismissing that in a sense, because we're too busy with life, the cares of this life, we don't want to have to go out of our way to do something for the kingdom. I don't know. These are just thoughts that, uh, that come to my mind as you were speaking. So good, good, good analysis there, brother Joshua. All right, brother Dean, what you got? I seen you up there shaking your head too. Man, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, told the rabbi, Abba Yahuwah. but what, uh, brother Joshua was saying to me, you know, Yahuwah knows what I know and what I do not know, but there are some times when some things are, are expressed that it just, you know, it hits as a, at, at, a, at a root level of common sense, you know, for my being like, it is this simple, you know, it is this simple. Um, and it's funny because before we got to there, I was um, thinking, I'm sure I've come across a scripture where it speaks about, you know, similar scripture within this banquet where even within the, you know, so first I was focusing, you know, when, when we're sharing and, and learning, hallelujah, I'm focusing on the love, Yahuwah's love, Yahuwah's love, Yahuwah's love. But then I also recall a story where within the same banquet after, you know, we call it the second invitation, yeah, that there was one who was rejected, yeah? And it always, you know, I always found, you know, that it threw me off and I'm like, hold on a minute, because I was having this conversation yesterday about within his love, there's also a standard. Within his love, there is a standard. And he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, uh, Yahuwah doesn't forsake his standard because of his love. He raises your standard. <laughs> he raises your standard. So it, it always threw me that, you know, and I don't want, if I'm throwing any, you know, if I'm throwing the, 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 the lesson today, then you just say, hey, we'll talk about it later. But the, it, it threw me that, it, um, you know, why would the lame, why, why would somebody from that group still, uh, you know, be, be rejected? You know, uh, what was it that they brought or brought not to the banquet that would cause his love to still say, hey, hey, I love you, but I have a standard. And this is this doesn't this doesn't you know, this doesn't match up. Um, but yeah, because I was thinking that what uh, Brother Joshua was saying, it, you know, it was just answering for me what that that question I've had for a very long time. Like, why? Why? You know, what would make? You know, he knows their condition. And, and, and the thing I wanted to say just before that was to say, um, when we talk about, you know, the first group, the, the second group or the wider family, yeah, um, it makes me think about, well, it was the Hebrews, it was the Yasserites' responsibility uh, to be that light from the beginning, yeah, but they, they only had, uh, they clung to, they, not that they only had, they clung to knowledge, but not to the love of Yahuwah. They clung to the knowledge, not to the heart of Yahuwah. Yeah. So they had a mind of his knowledge, but they didn't have a heart for him. Yeah. So as a result, that's those who then came were those who maybe they didn't have the knowledge, but they had a heart. They had a need in their heart. So they came. Um, but yeah, so yeah, in short, um, it, sorry, that's what I want to say. Sorry, guys. Um, the brokenness, the sin, the lame, the all these things, did that not, sorry, did that, did not the sin, sorry, the brokenness, the lame, all this, did those things, those things not come after the fall? Yeah. So those things, um, if those things weren't a part of the original plan, you know, I, I, I likened them, them to the, uh, the ramifications of sin. Yeah. So... Um, of the sin in the world, not necessarily, yeah, of the sin in the world, yeah, and if that's the case, those who knew, 
of the truth, those who knew of the, you know, the holiness of Yahuwah and the love of Yahuwah, it was, it was our, it's our responsibility, you know, to show forth um, who he is and reflect him that we become the calling card. And I believe that it's where we fell short, where he said, I'm going to send my son because I know my son is a direct reflection of me. So he will be that calling card. And then the son then says, well, you know, everything as it is in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So the son then says, Yahushua then says, okay, now I'm going to give it back to you. Yeah, I've cleaned it up. And now I'm going to give it back to you and do your job. Go out there and give out the business cards. Go out there and shout in the streets about the love and mercy of Yahuwah. So, hallelujah. The calling on our lives is very clear, you know. And I see that this is part of what this is about. There's a calling, you know, a call to come to this great banquet. There's a, there's a promise here, you know, you come, you know, as, as we, as we read in, in the earlier part of this, yeah, you know, let me go back here. Let's see. Where was it at? I just lost my whole train of thought where I was, what I was just talking about. That's terrible. Anyways, let me move on and I'll come back to that when it comes back to me. Brother Jadiel, and then I'm going to go to you, Brother Charles. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, you could go to Brother Charles first. I know he had, he had his hand up first. Brother Charles, you want to go? And then we'll go to Brother Jadiel. No, that's all right. I, I just was reading it. Um, I was trying to tie in Matthew 24, 36 to, through something, but and Noah didn't, I mean, y'all didn't give them a warning, I don't think. I don't know. So I don't want to tie that in with this. That's that's what I was thinking, like when when Noah was making the ark and then they was giving him marriage and all that stuff, doing all that stuff at that time. But that, that's what I was going to say, but it don't match with it, I don't think. So that's all I will have. Praise you Thank you, brother. Brother Jadiel. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, praise you. Uh, all the insight. Um, looking at this parable in a personal thing, in a personal way, and looking at um, just correlating it to, to us, right? So it's, these people are making excuses with things that Yah is the one that the one calling them is the one that blessed them with the things that they're using as excuses. You know, uh, the field, the farms, the cattle, the wife, you know, you obtain favor from Yahuwah because you find a wife. And then when Yahuwah calls you, 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 um, you set your, you set your obsession on, on the things that you were blessed with rather than the one that's blessing, blessing you. And, this is what happens today. We lose sight. We get this tunnel vision when when we we know Yah has given us a good thing. Like Brother Dean said, these are good things. Yah has given us a good thing. And then when Yah calls us to do, to become a little bit more deeper with himself, because he's calling you to now to eat with him, right? So he's calling you to get into a more intimate situation with him. We are so focused on the good things that we have. Well, yeah, yeah, bless me with this job. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus here. I can't really do this over here. Or, or, you know, yeah, bless me with a wife. I, I don't want to really mess it up. So I'm gonna avoid, you know, standing on what I believe in because I don't want to get into an argument or, you know, whatever it may be. It, it's it's deviating or excusing the fact that Yah is calling you to come closer to sit at his table, to come closer and not be so caught up with the things that he's given to you, but to be, be caught up with the fact that he is the, he's the giver. And I think that this is the mindset that they had at the time, which is why um, he started out by saying, you know, when you, when you give to some, do it like me, do it like me, do it like, yeah. When you give to someone, give it to the poor where they can't pay you back. It seems like you give knowing that they, those people that you give to is able to give you back or to show that they can also give and give you back. 
And that's why this verse in verse 15, it, it to me, it allowed me to see a little bit more of the mind who was sitting there eating. Because he said, one of the people that sat down to eat, they heard these things and they said, blessed is he that that shall eat bread in the kingdom of Elohim. They, they were They were kind of boasting like, hey, you know, we're here eating with them. Blessed is he when, they, when they're really saying blessed is me. <laughs> they're not really saying blessed is he. They're saying blessed is me because I'm here eating. So uh, blessed is me. And then he goes into the parable saying, listen, my father's going to call people that he blessed and they're not going to come because they're going to be stuck on what they received, on what they were blessed with instead of the calling that I have for them. You know, sometimes the calling that I have is to leave the things that I blessed you with. But we look at these things like, oh, Yah gave us these things. that you don't even realize that sometimes Yah gives you these things for a time. And when he calls you to do something else, you got to leave the things that he gave you before to receive the things that he wants you to have now. But they wanted to hold on to the things that Yah gave them before. And because of that, they didn't heed the call. So this is this is how I'm, I'm listening. I'm seeing how people today are doing the same thing. They're looking at all these blessings and they're making excuses on why they need to, sometimes even why they need to break the commandment. Well, I break the commandment because this is a good thing to do. You know, so we should, I think we were talking about this last week about Shabbat, you know, how y'all call us to, to guard the Shabbat and to keep it holy. And that we have all these good things that y'all tells us to do. And now we're, we're in, intruding the good things into the things that y'all wants us to guard so he wants us to guard the shabbat and now we say well this is a good thing so i can i can do this during the shabbat or this is a good thing or this job is a good job it helps a lot of people so i could do this instead of uh keeping it holy you know so our mindset has to be ready to go wherever he calls us to go and i think that that's what he's trying to remind his people and us that our minds have to be ready to move to where he calls us to go and not be stuck in the blessing that he gave us, you know, cause we're supposed to mature. There's, there's levels. So if he wants us to get to a different place, we can't be busy looking at all the blessings in front of our faces that he gave us. We have to trust him and sometimes move out of those situations where it seems like we're going into trials. But when we move out of those situations towards Yah, towards what he called us to do, it may feel like a trial, but it's going to end up uh, with us sitting at his table with him face to face. And I think that that's sometimes a, a fear that we all have. I mean, I'm speaking from experience. Like it is a fear, you know, sometimes to look at the things that y'all gave you to be comfortable and then to, to know that he's telling you to do something that may, that may jeopardize that, that, that comfortable situation. So um it's a, it's a lot like you said earlier it's a lot that you could pull from this so i'm just sharing some thoughts hallelujah thank you for sharing because uh those insights as everybody's insight is, is it continues to expand our understanding of what we're reading and what's expected of us um i'm gonna come to you brother jp then we're gonna shift gears and head on to the next portion what you got brother I, I just had some thoughts. I was I was thinking about what the sister had asked. Uh, it's been a, a while, but I was thinking about uh, verses twelve to fourteen, and it seems like as I keep reading it, that Yahusha was bringing out another understanding uh, as he's in the middle of talking about this conversation of a wedding feast. It seems like it stops in eleven, but then he goes into twelve, and then he starts talking about. Um, like making a feast called the poor, the maimed, the lime, the blind, the blind, the blind, and he says, and thou shalt be blessed for they cannot repay you, um, and you'll be repaid at the resurrection. And I was like, wow, like it was almost like he 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 gave them some more understanding on something else as far as how to take care of people or or who to go and who to go and search out, who to who to you know in this case is who to make a dinner for. And then in verse 15, one of them that's sitting at the table, he heard these things. Now, those things could be from the beginning of 14, but he says, and he heard these things, and he says, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of Elohim. And so it's amazing that um, for me, as I was, I was receiving it, was Yahusha bringing out uh, 
just all these different understandings, but in this case, bringing an understanding on who you're called to go and reach out to, which is those that are broken. And that's why I would say it connects when he says, I didn't, you know, like you should be a physician if you're to walk as he walked to those that are sick and, and, and injured, um, because those that are already well and they're walking with Yahuwah, definitely fellowship with them and gather with them, but go and seek out those that are injured and sick and, and they need the healing. Um, and so I was taking it from that position. I just want to share my thoughts on that as well. Hallelujah. Yeah, definitely uh, something that you need to pay attention to, you know, because if we look at, you know, he's, he's telling, but when you feast, invite, he's telling you who to invite. These are ones that don't get invited to much of anything because people look at them. They look down on them. Oh, this is somebody that's poor. This guy is crippled. That one's lame. That one's blind, you know, and people have a tendency of staying away from that don't don't they don't engage or they don't even get invited to these type of things you know there's nothing wrong with these people you know uh, they're in a bad way the, and and they need to feel the love of Allahim as well you know and, and and i would say in most cases they probably don't receive that from the religious folks that you were just talking about the one that was sitting at the table and he heard this who is it that, that, that was sitting at these tables? This was the Pharisees, right? And, and, and that group of people that were invited in, you know, the Pharisees, you know, that were invited. So this is a Pharisee, just like Brother Jadiel said, his, his view or his, his eyes, if you will, were focused on, on the blessings, if you will, of, of being one that's, that's included in, in the kingdom or in the reign. You know, and here he's attributing it to, you know, eating bread because of, of the banquet situation. But in this sense, this is really what we're, what we're looking at, what he's referring to, you know, you, who is his love for the people doesn't look at us in our lacking, you know, other than in a sense that it brings compassion where he, he's trying to raise us up to a, a different kind of thinking. And that thinking can, can attribute to a lot of things, you know. Um, but these folks that he's, that he's telling us to do is people that wouldn't, <coughs> excuse me, normally get, uh, considered, you know, if you look at the religious folks, when they look at somebody that's sick or blind, what have they said about them? There must've been something, they must be full of sin or their parents or something. They're looking for an excuse or a reason to disqualify someone where if we see what we're seeing here. Yahuwah is saying, go and invite, let them come and let them have an opportunity to come and sit at my table as well, you know, because th those people need to hear and be invited and feel the love as well of Allahim, which I'm sure, you know, if you go and talk to some folks that are in that kind of a position, some might not have a very good perspective on what's happening in their lives or why it's happened. And can you imagine if you and I were to go to someone? that we're in that position and invite them to something of this level, that would change their life, wouldn't it? I mean, it would change their perspective on things that maybe there's somebody that does care about me or somebody that does love me, or, you know, you don't know where somebody's mind is at, you know, when they're in this position and having to deal with this stuff in their lives. So I see that, you know, the compassion and the love of the father in this story, you know, uh, that he's not just, he didn't just stop at the ones that he invited. He could have just said, okay, well, then we're just going to discount it. And we'll just, uh, just, you know, go with what we have, but he didn't do that. You know, he began to reach out, reach out to folks to, to expand his, his reach, his invite. Come on, come in into the kingdom and check it out. See what, see what I have to offer. Sit down at the table with me so that I can, so I can give you a different perspective, a different view, you know, change their their perspective that's that you know the renewing of our mind you know that we that we all have to go through to be able to understand the importance of this and what is really being said here why should we do that brother dean <laughs> shalom shalom um so it just made made me think this feast uh this feast when i think about the feast now i think about uh, also the last supper you know, with the you know to go to the last supper, and I think of the bread, 
you know, now, and, and I think of the bread of life. And when I think of this feast now, it makes me, sorry, around this era of this banquet, it makes me think the banqueting, they're coming to feast at the banquet. Yep. Um, what are they feasting on? I'm just hearing that they're feasting. Ultimately, we should be feasting on the bread of life when we gather. Yep. Um, so now what this makes me think about is looking at the danger of becoming an elite group, the dangers of um, also, you know, because we are set apart, we are leading the the charge of, you know, who can come and who cannot come. Yeah. So it, it's as if this, you know, like when jo Brother Joshua was speaking about, there was one side where you're the people are saying trying to uh, negotiate with the with the servants, you know, those who have the messengers. But then there's also the responsibility of the messengers to not um, uh, overstep their authority. Yeah, and to not overstep their position uh, and to not become so full of themselves. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just it just um, when we're reading this now, that that's what I'm gathering that we, we you know, that it makes me think that don't become don't become an elitist. Like when you, you know, it was brought out that the one who was said, you know, oh, blessed is he who, you know, who can, you know, break bread or, you know, seat and eat in, in the presence. Um, just need to be very careful, you know, um, and I like this conversation about, you know, having the mind, you know, um, that can receive uh, instructions like, you know, at any given moment to move, you know, to move from the titles, to move from the uh, status, to move from the knowledge of what we call blessings, you know, um, and even what we call cursed, you know, but just be ready to move because, you know, he does, he, he, you know, he's doing a new thing and he's, he can turn around things so quickly that it, it would, you know, we, we would we would go from being wise to being foolish very quickly if we were not hearing. So, hallelujah. Love the discussion this morning. Brother Charles. Yeah, just real quick. I know um, you had um, said Yasharal earlier. These, these are probably an original branch. But when I see it, I believe it's grafted on branches and original branch at the same time. Because, because those who 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 accepted the word, and it seems like all of these, he sent his servant, right? So he sent his servant to those who who had things. Most of most of the people who who say they believe, whether they grafted in or not, you are a part of that branch. Because Simon was wasn't even um, a regular Yasharal. He was he was a Canaanite. So I believe that he was talking about all these believers. And you all, you so-called believers who have things, who are able to walk upright, who are able to um, see supposedly the word and and who are rich or whatever and have all these fields and you, you got all these crops and plants and stuff, right? But since you don't want to come, I'm going to call someone who can't see, who who's not walking upright and who is not somewhat into this truth and they will receive it um, um straight forward and that's kind of how i think that i ain't want to um, that's 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 what i was seeing though so so praise god he makes his kingdom available to those that want to be part of it you know that hear it and believe it and receive it and they begin to pursue it themselves you know we can go out and try to talk and convince people about how great this kingdom is and come join the banquet and some people may come just, just so they can eat, right? Uh, just a curiosity, what, what, what's going on over there? But when it comes down to it, in the end, it's the heart of that person, whether it's somebody that's poor, whether it's somebody that's lame, whether it's a Pharisee, you know, as we see, you know, uh, with, with Shaul, you know, there, it's all coming down to you and I, our willingness to engage, to pursue, to do the things that, that the scripture outlines that you and I should do, those are the ones that, that are going to end up in the kingdom, you know, out of all the people that are invited. And he's invited the whole world. The, world, the word of, of, of Yahuwah is, is worldwide. You know, you have an opportunity to believe or not believe. But when the, when the time comes for this banquet to happen and the invitations go out, are you going to be too busy with your life? to be able to hear it, or are you just going to simply just reject it and tell, you know, the servant, sorry, I'm too busy right now. I can't come go tell the master. And what's the master going to say? Huh, I'm not excusing them. 
they're not going to, they're not going to enter into my, they're never going to taste my supper. They're not going to enter in because they rejected me over what, what's more important. What's in your life that's more important than that call, that invitation from the master. There is nothing greater than that. <clears throat> so if that call comes and you reject it because you want to enjoy your life, you want to, you're too busy with your new wife or your new field or your new oxen, whatever, to, whatever the excuse might be, then shame on you. This story should come back and haunt you because this is a warning to us all. And now let's go ahead and continue with where we were. And let's see what it takes to be a servant or a, a disciple rather. What is the cost of being a servant? Brother JP, if you'll take us, uh, just go down to uh, 33, please. All right, hallelujah. Uh, this is Luke chapter 14, starting in verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his state and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sits not down first and counts the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sits not down first? And consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. How does that tie into what we've been discussing, brother? What do you see? <laughs> Well, hallelujah. I mean, I, I think the blessing uh, for me is, is you know, we, you come into this, you start reading the scriptures, you start, you know, maybe going to church or, or whatever it may be, however you come in and, and you do it with, uh, you, there is a blindness that, that I think people do it in, but then that real that ruach really settles in in you and you start to realize that it's a serious matter and and that's when i believe you start to count the cost and you start to really seek out and you search your heart are you willing to give your life to be his disciple and it's it's amazing that yahuwah works in us that way where he gives us just enough in the beginning of our walks just enough for us to handle and then eventually it's going to come and your plate's going to get full and you're going to have to really eat the word that has been given to you and count that cost so hallelujah for his rock thinking about counting the cost how many of us have counted the cost of this walk? <clears throat> How many of us have actually considered what's required of us? Honestly, I don't know about you, but I can't say that when I originally was, because I was born and raised in this, this is my whole life uh, being, well, originally in the church, but just being in the word, understanding it, you know, can I say that I've ever actually just pondered or, counted the cost of what's required of me? Am I able to do this? Am I willing to press in and, and to do what's required of me? Because there is a cost. There is a requirement for you and I to be disciples, as we have just heard. You know, it's important that we view this in that way, because if you're not, if you're not ready to understand what's required of you, which is counting the cost, because there is things that are required of you and I. And if you're not, you're not, you're playing 
uh, and you're 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 not serious about what's being uh, presented to you as a as a lifestyle as a way of life. This uh, and as we continue to look at this, I wanted to you know kind of hone in on the very uh, on, in chapter twenty six. There's a lot of misunderstandings about what he's saying here. You know, he's not calling us to hate our father and mother and you know wives and children. He's not calling us to that. That word, I don't even know why they put that in there. But I think that it, <clears throat> if we look at the actual strongs of that word, it basically means to love more or, you know, the, the, or love less, I guess, in some sense. But to put, to put your, uh, your, your father, your mother, your wife, your children, brothers, sisters, all of that in a higher position or a higher regard than, than the father, that's the problem. Uh, higher in, uh, than Yahusha, that's the problem. You know, this is, has to be a, a lifestyle of commitment and devotion to, you know, this walk, because you got to walk in this thing every single day. Once you once you begin this walk, once you gain the understanding of what what it is that you believe, and and, and what is it going to cost you on a daily basis to be able to to walk this out the right way, to be able to to be able to uh, achieve the goal or the the purpose of why we're walking this out. We don't just do this just to be part of a club. This is so much deeper than than just a surface level gathering together and, you know, hey, I'm part of this or I'm part of that. It's not about all of that. It's about your devotion. It's your commitment that, that, that has been uh, <clears throat> put in place for, for for believers. You know, this is part of the criteria that's going to that's gonna be required of those that are going to be entering into eternity. You know, we can't walk this out hap haphazardly, if you will. Or, I don't know if I said that word right, but without with just without no focus, without no direction, we can't just come in this and walk aimlessly and think we're going to hit the mark. You know, there's people that walked out through this through, through the centuries that missed it. Those are the ones that got scattered. So we're trying to learn from the mistakes of others. And in this sense, we're, we want to get this right. You know, we're supposed to love, you know, if we hate anyone that, you know, that's considered murder in and in, in, in within the commandment. So he's not saying that here. And that's what confuses a lot. Well, why would he say that to hate you? He's not saying that he wants you to love him more than all of them. Anybody in your life should not be number one. The father and his son should hold that position. And that's what he's really saying here to us. So if we're in this position where, like we just read earlier, oh, I just got married, I can't come. Excuse me, <clears throat> that's not a good enough excuse. They should not be more important than the father's business, you know? So, you know, then he goes into about bearing your stake. You have to pick up your, your stake every single day. And what does that mean? You know, you have to die to yourself, your own desires, your will. The things that, that that we were just talking about earlier, you know, the things that forgive me, I just bought, you know, a new land. I got to, I want to go take care of that. I just bought some new oxen. Those excuses don't matter. He's telling you that you have to, you have to die to yourself and you have to, you have to pick up his, his work, his calling on your life so that you begin to walk in this way. So that when he does call you to come into the, you know, into the feast, into the banquet, but you're not going to reject him. You're not going to be busy because there's nothing more important than what that calling is for you to come and do. So, you know, he's telling us here before you begin to do anything, and I'm, I mean, I, and I'm asking each one of you to do the same. Think about this. Count the cost of what we're talking about today. Is this something that you're going to be able to put into your life as a, as a way of life for you that's going to keep you on this path, that's going to keep you in a position where you're going to be able to not be replaced by somebody else. Your position is going to be secured. So as we're looking at this, that foundation, you know, and making sure that we have everything that we need and understanding to be able to finish this race, to con continue to finish this, this journey that we are on, you know, so we have to make sure that, that, we, that we sit down and we take counsel, you know, that we listen and we pay attention, you know, as the scripture says in 31, you know, 
you got to you got to think about it. Sit down and you got to take counsel. You got to you got to weigh out what is what is going to be required of me. Can I do this? Is this something that I'm willing to commit my life to? Every single day, every moment of that day, you've got to be aware of your thoughts, your responses, your words, you know, all of these things, you know, and and doing them in a way that has been uh, outlined for us, you know, we should be coming in 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 order, you know, in alignment with the, what the Torah tells us, so that we find ourselves in the position where we are able to be one of His taught ones. Hallelujah. So. Uh, uh, with that being said, I see your hand up there, uh, Brother Jadiel. What you got for us? Uh, praise Yah. Yeah, I, I like the points that you're bringing out with the um, the focus, the counting the costs, making sure that what what you the value of 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 both what Yah is calling you to do and what um, and, and the things that He blessed you with. One of the things I wanted to point out was. Um, where he mentioned to go to those, you know, those who are lame, those who are, you know, without. And then he talked about earlier about going, creating a feast for them who cannot pay you back. You know, that that's those are the people you should go to. The interesting thing is that I remember in John chapter nine, he, he was talking to the Pharisees and he said that they were blind. And so it's interesting how the one people who think that they have something are the ones that's also blind and lame and they don't walk and they need help walking and they need help seeing and they can't understand and they need help hearing and all of these things. But they're looking at what they have and they think that they possess something when they're actually the lame ones. And it's interesting in Revelation, it talks about uh, the, the seventh church and it says Laodicea think that they are rich and increased with goods but they are poor wretched miserable blind and naked so when i'm looking back at this and putting all that together it's kind of like what you you mentioned about the physician statement they made like I'm, i didn't come for the healthy but for the for for the sick it's like he he was trying to tell them that all of them were sick and all of them was blind and that he was calling all of them but you think that you have something you know you think that you have a possession that makes you you know, uh, uh, that 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 alleviates or, or or removes the the affliction that you need me to take away. You know, so you think you have a position, and you don't need, or you think you have a farm, and you don't need me to feed you anymore. You know, or you think you have oxen, and you don't need me to help you work anymore. You know, because the oxen was used to work the field, or you have a wife, and you don't need me as a helper. You know, because it says that Yahuwah is a helper for us as well. So you have a wife, but you don't need me as a helper. It's, it's kind of like they're replacing or we replace Yah to fulfill the things that we we put earthly things in. We put earthly things in a place where Yah should be. And then we look at ourselves like we're no longer in need. And then we give our excuses to Yah. When Yah is trying to give us insight and say, it don't matter what you have, you need to recognize that you are always in need of me. Even if you possess something, you need me because those things can be taken away, but I can't be taken away. So I, 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 it just, when you was reading down and you went to the count your costs, it just combined everything that, that you guys were reading today. And it just reminded me of those other verses. So, um, so he is like, he's not even telling them that they even possess anything. He's just telling them that they think that they have something that, that is of value more than what Yah is calling them for. And they absolutely do not. And we absolutely do not. And we need to stay focused, making sure that we don't put anything in that place or we're going to get, we're going to miss the call. And, and that's not something that we want to do, you know, so praise Yah. Wow. Powerful revelation there, brother. Cause when you're reading these things, you're thinking about sick, lame you're not thinking about healthy people that you know that, that have all of these things and they think that they're all right you know but like you said he called that they he said that they were sick and that they were lame you know but did they see themselves in that way see there that's a whole nother perspective of our vision of who we see as sick and lame you know who is poor and and, and needy you know and you're right all of us are 
it doesn't matter of our statue. It doesn't matter of our position, our wealth. It doesn't matter about any of that. It comes down to a condition of our hearts, you know, and, and, and we can be, we can be sick and, and ill and in need of a physician for that, you know? So, wow. There's so much revelation come out of this discussion. It's, it's amazing. Brother Joshua, what you got? I'm still reading uh, specific key words, uh, unable to, unable to finish. And, then, and I'm thinking back to where it says, you know, he feel tired, does not sit down first and count the cost. And then it says specifically whether he has enough to complete it. And I, and I think the word enough is pertaining to belief. Because if, because like it says, to in order to come to him, we must first believe that he is. And then, so without belief, if we don't have belief, the gift of belief, if we don't receive that gift, how are we able to do anything through him when he gives us the strength? And then going back to where it says, you know, his father, mother, wife, children, brother, sisters, and his own life too, unable to finish what, you know, being called to do is because within our mind, we believe things, you know, matter more than him. I think this whole structure right here is is saying with all your mind, because you cannot, if you don't have the belief, you cannot do it with all your mind. You can't, you can't put the truth in your heart if you don't believe it. Then, then uh, because uh, how else can we do anything? How else can we complete the Torah in love if we don't believe? When it says fulfilling of the Torah, you know, is love is fulfilling of it. So that's that's what I'm seeing here is that this all has to deal with, you know, the the entire mind, give up all that he has within his mind. Then because the mind's connected to the heart. And then if we put truth in our minds, then truth is then going to be in our hearts. And we can think about it always and speak it always. At least that's that's where I see it, because I always see this word unable 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 so we must have the belief to be able to walk in his ways with all of our mind and and with we and that way if we believe it we can look at his word and take counsel in his word and see what the cost is as it's pointing out to us right now oh, and yeah. actually see it with eyes open and ears open without belief none of this is possible that's true that's a good point. Good observation. Natasha, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I uh, wanted to uh, say that I really appreciate Jael's uh, comment where he says that, um, you know, where we tend to put our faith in humans too much. Uh, this has been a problem since the beginning. We, you know, we may have friends, a few, a lot. Um, we may have family, but that doesn't mean that they're always going to be there for us. You know, every day when we wake up is through the mercy of our Creator. And um, in my personal life, um, I've always trusted in Him to help me. Um, times when I was frustrated or angry or feeling helpless. Every day I start my day saying, please help me today. Please be with me. Uh, it was the same with King David. I mean, this man had everything, you know, he, he, he had nothing as a, as a, as a shepherd boy. Then he rose to be a king. But even in the whole book of Psalms, he's constantly, constantly pouring his heart out to the father and asking him to help him because even his own family members wanted to kill him. Um, and he, he felt helpless also many times and he just kept going towards the father because he knew that all strength was in his father that he can make anything happen as far as we were concerned we could keep our faith in him and he'll make it right for us um and so i i just think that um you know when he does call us for that uh that when he gives us that invite that we should take it um, even though there's things that are happening in our lives, we, we have to try and learn to put it aside so that we can draw more closer to him and be more, um, have a more intimate relationship with him because that's what he's wanting to do. He wants to be intimate with us, uh, type of intimacy that we cannot receive from a human being. 
Only he can right. give it to us. I agree. Hallelujah. That's, it's very important that, you know, and I think sometimes uh, we're so busy in life and we get frustrated really easy as human beings because the world we live in is like crazy. It, 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 we live in a really mad world. <laughs> and he wants to drop away from him. He, he's throwing things at us and says, well, this is more important. Pay attention to this more. Or this is more, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, a place where you should be taking care of business right now. But if, if for me, it's like I have to, I have to really constantly train my mind and say, you know what, uh, Tasha, um, yeah, these things need attention, but uh, maybe you can get it done today. Wait on the Father, and He'll send you somebody to help you to get right. these. Things done. Well, that's where we need to talk, turn to for sure. Yeah, and so I found that uh, we always look to Him, no matter what 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 we're dealing with in our life. Right. Well, thank you, sister. That's been uh, definitely some some things for us to look at. And what is one of the things that you said that, you know, it had led me back to the cost again, you know, the cost of this. Are you are you willing to lose your family and your friends, you know, because that happens? You know, we a lot of us have that same kind of story. You know, as we walk in this walk, we tend to lose those that are close to us. That's another cost that we have to consider. Brother JP, we got one more minute. Go for what you got. All right. Hallelujah. I'll be fast. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 24, it says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the master Yahusha to testify the gospel, the grace of Elohim. And uh, the second verse I'll read quickly here is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. He says, do you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Um, and I just love the, I, I was bringing that because the brother Paul here, he speaks on giving his life away and just running. And I, I take it like that. He's like, we're just running and we know what the prize is. We've counted the cost. And so praise Yahuwah that he set us all apart in this way. Um, I just want to give him esteem for setting all of the brothers and sisters here listening that he set us all apart and to do a duty to do a duty for the glory and the esteem of yahuwah and his only begotten son yahushua mashiach so hallelujah Shabbat shalom. hallelujah brother thank you for that great great discussion study today very edifying i appreciate it all your all your input was definitely needed so may yahuwah continue to brock you on this shabbat day shabbat shalom everyone all righty, time for our announcement.